Good morning. Welcome to Terra at Home. Uh, we're back with Ben this week, and uh, we were talking about uh, Scott's and some of their amazing products uh, that we have. And uh, we're now particularly focusing on uh, some of our garden beds and our pots, and how, especially particularly when we talk about Miracle Grow, and really it is like a miracle because it's amazing how yes. you can change the face of your garden by using some of these products. Yes. Right. So let's talk about. Okay. So we're in this time of year now, uh, beginning of June, and some of the things, the beginning stages of what we should be doing. Yes. So most people, if you haven't planted yet. The most important piece is always get with your transplant fertilizer. Okay. Recommended for everything. There's mm -hmm. both the liquid option, mm -hmm. uh, which is very simple. Again, you use it with a watering can, one cap full. The bottle will last you for all season. You can use it on your trees, uh, on all your herbs, your veggies, on all your flowers. It's mm -hmm. fantastic. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, for those that are more conscious about the, uh, want to go with the organic choice, right. for vegetables there's also an organic choice, which is bone meal. Mm -hmm. uh, fantastic product as well. It's a little bit more slow release. It will blend with the soil. Right. Uh, but it just will get your plant started on the right foot. It really focuses on root growth. It's fantastic. And it really makes such a difference. And, and, and people will notice if they do not use these products, yes. it really, it's, it's like night and day. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So now we're getting, we're going to the beginning stages of our garden and uh, and we're kind of, okay, now where do we go next? We have to obviously people want to get plants in there yeah. and they want to get it planted but they want to make sure that uh, they're they have the good foundation so yeah. we've got that started now where do we go from here if you haven't planted yet mm -hmm. uh, most important is soil amendments so make mm -hmm. sure you got the right product for your soils whether that's a uh, for the garden specific okay. or also for containers of course right yes it's tempting to leave the soil from last year but there's just a it huge is. benefit of getting new soil you have no problem with disease carrying over from the previous season okay and also that soil has been used the plants it's have kind of nutrient deficient isn't exactly, it? exactly okay. exactly it's washed out by the rain if you left it outside so again, start with a good soil because okay. that's going to give you great plants. Okay, that's a good tip because yeah, a lot of people, oh, the yes. dirt looks good. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but no, we yes. want to have that. No, we want to have it's some really healthy stuff. It. That's right. Okay. All Once right. you've done your planting, mm -hmm. uh, as you've watered in with the, with the transplant fertilizer, mm -hmm. then you start your regular feeding. And okay. again, there's many different options that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, the best way and the one that we prefer is, of course, your liquid feed. Right. There's several products that you can use. They simply mm -hmm. mix there's with lots. water. Some you use a watering can. Some you, you can hook up directly to your hose. Mm -hmm. Like this one. This one's really, really cool. That's, or like yeah, that's an amazing product. Mm -hmm. The liquid feed, if you show the back side there, mm -hmm. it actually clicks right in the back of the container. Yep. And right you just hook it up to your garden hose, and as you water, it feeds. The amazing thing is that this does both the containers, and you can right. do all your plants, but also does your, does your garden. So you, it's multi-purpose. Multi-purpose. Very right. easy. And very cost and effective come, too. Very cost effective. Come in different formulas, both for vegetable gardens and for flowers, mm -hmm. and also all-purpose. Oh, I love that that's idea. Great. And that's the great part is that I mean, it, people want it to be as easy as possible. You know, yes. as we talked in our last segment as well, it's just about you know the very little amount of maintenance as possible. Yes. But you want things to look beautiful. So again, the, because there are lots of different options, and again, easy to measure. You don't have to worry you're trying to do the math. Yes. Just make it easy. Yes. And again, slow release products are always great as well. The shake and feed and everything. Right? Slow release. Again, if we focus on containers, there's the uh, the granular that you can put in mm -hmm. and it will last for your growing season okay again that six to eight week period every time you water it will mix with the soil it will it will uh, uh, release its nutrients to the plants mm -hmm. and makes for great baskets oh right again. absolutely it does yeah. and again you just literally see your flowers multiply yes with yes. in a very short period of yes. time you have yes. a lot of color and again let's face it we all want to get as much color as we can out of our plants especially yes. in the slow the, yes. the very short growing season that we do yeah. have yeah Okay. The liquid feed is also quite important because mm -hmm. the liquid feed actually allows you to target the plant directly and it gets both absorbed through the leaves but okay. also through the roots. Okay. And the nice thing is that it's, you can control it with the weather. So if you have a lot of rain, right. you can give it that feeding. If it's very dry, then every fifth or fourth watering, use that food in your container. You can pre-mix it in your in your, uh, your watering can mm -hmm. and you just apply it to your planters and your, your gardens. And Beautiful. that's the thing because you do have to look at uh, you know the environment that you're in, where you're growing, and again, looking uh, just like when we talked about lawn care, but also looking at uh, the area, that whether you have a lot of sun, a lot of shade, yes. and again, when you have hanging plants, they dry out a lot easier and again the water is going through them a lot more so yes. you're getting draining again of nutrients yes. right so topping them up and keeping on top, top of it the correct right yeah okay so again talking about some of the different types of shake and feeds that we have in that too again just lots of options for people uh, again what's really great about it is uh, again the veggie side of things veggie as side well. yes specifically made for veggies mm -hmm. and you can see that it will just produce the tomatoes that are just a little bit bigger it will just help you with some of the disease 
mm -hmm. uh, as far as uh, uh, you know, just keeping those plants healthy, mm -hmm. keeping them growing, and giving them that maximum performance. And then also, of course, not only that, but you're also giving it's going to be a, a better vegetable in the end or fruit yes. because you know you are giving it more, almost more vitamins, right? Correct. So it's going to be actually just better, not only look good, but it's actually going to be better for you. Correct. Right. Correct. Okay. And again, also we talked, you know, we've been talking a lot about um, again having to spray, you know, fruits and vegetables and that, but this in general is going to help them. This is going to help the plants well. get healthy. That's right, correct. That's right. correct. Just in general. And I love how, again, we're talking about the spray and how you can attach. There are so many different attachments, so that makes it a lot easier as well. And uh, again, the soil in general, we have some down the front yes. and also the mulch. Let's yes. talk a little bit about the mulch. Mulch is very important, mm -hmm. especially uh, once you've done your planting and everything looks good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not only makes it look your garden's finished when mm -hmm. you apply the mulch, there's also the benefit that it just gives you that layer, that insulation from the warm sunshine mm -hmm. on those roots. It keeps the moisture accessible to the plants. Okay. The nice thing about the mulch is also it's actually a slow feed because as it decomposes, it's a natural product, oh. it will release the nutrients into the soil and your plants will thrive through that. Okay, so I don't think a lot of people realize that mulch is actually beneficial, when this particular mulch this anyway. Particular, all mulches are. Mm -hmm. uh, this one in particular, what we've done with this one, we actually have the, uh, the, the color guard in there. Mm -hmm. So this is a mulch that truly holds its color. So you can actually, oh, yes, sometimes you have a mulch that fades to natural, yes, which, is, which is fine. Right. But some people are really insistent on either that black look, right. uh, the red look, or the natural look. And this is what, with the color right. guard, will keep that in check. Because you're finding you're, you're constantly topping up on the mulch when, when it is fading like that. Um, or if you're in a high wind area and obviously it's blowing around, but uh, you want to have it. So how much are you suggesting you, you put down? Uh, typically about three inches. Three so inches. So it's about a layer okay. about this thick. Okay. If you can achieve that, it's absolutely perfect. And okay. once it's in place, you can simply add to it. So for some mm -hmm. of your annual beds, of course, it's easier you move your plants out of the way mm -hmm. but for all your perennials for your trees your shrubs mm -hmm. you just leave that in place and just you only it. top it up when it's needed when it's needed and that's something that you can keep there in into the winter season right Correct. You just, and then it's you just can top stays. it up again right. okay yeah. all right it also keeps your weed da weeds down which is fantastic too so yeah. you have less, okay. so less, that was less work thing. with that that's okay right. exactly so it does actually do that now you're not layering any type of plastic underneath that at all no. right it's no. just right directly under the soil yes. okay all right good tips okay so any other tips that we can recommend for people this time of year as they're getting their gardens growing. Enjoy it. Yeah, that's the thing, Do your right? work, sit back, relax do, on the patio, exactly. and do watch it Exactly, do what you grow. need to do, right? Do yeah. all these steps, and again, just as we were talking about with the gardens before, if you do all of this, and you're feeding your lawn properly, and your plants properly, um, by giving them, you know, the, again, the soil, yes. right? So that's the, if we go through it again, the soil, proper fertilizing, proper watering. Yes. And uh, in your- The main is then finishing it off with the mulch. And finishing off with there mulch. Yeah. And then you've got an all around good garden. So again, talk to the uh, experts here at Terra. Ben's one of them, and uh, he can help you out for sure, and uh, really kind of get you uh, get you have a beautiful garden this year, and beautiful pots, beautiful planters, and all that you need, and get all the color that you can get, especially using Miracle Grow products. Yes. All right. Thanks so much, Ben. That's it for uh, Tara at home. We'll be back with more in just a little bit. I told you, Mama's coming this weekend, right? No, you left that part out. Her first visit this weekend? Look around. We're not ready for that. Where are you going? To Tara. Where do you think? This is amazing. You're amazing. Well, we had a little help. Tara, where color lives. Heritage Perennials. Look for us in the blue pots. Welcome back to Tara at Home. I'm here with Ashley McCormick, and uh, you are a female race car driver. We've had you on the show before. I've interviewed you like a million times, I feel now, and it's so nice to have you on the show. I, I think, first of all, before we talk about this great charity that you're part of, um, let's talk a little bit about your background and, and how you're doing. Um, you've been started on go-karts, basically, when you were a kid, mm -hmm. right? So you've been in the driving world for a very, very long time. It has been a very long time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and so you were, you're doing well. So how, where are you at right now in the, in the race car scene? Uh, this year I'm racing the Camaro again mm -hmm. in the Grand Am. Yeah, a great Camaro. <laughs> yeah, in the Grand Am Continental Sports Car Challenge. Mm -hmm. um, I'm racing for the CKS team again as well. Um, we're halfway through the season. We're doing really well. Um, we've had a couple hiccups here and there, but mm -hmm. we're, we're positive that you know, if we're running in the top 10, 
and we're happy that's with awesome. it. And that's the thing, yeah. it's, it's really a team sport, isn't it? It is. You know, a lot of people, you know, pay focus. Obviously, what you do as an individual in that car is very, very important. And mm -hmm. it's, it is, you know, it's not going to happen without you. But everybody else matters too around you. So like, oh, what yeah. is your team, how many people does this consist of? On an average team weekend, we have two cars, 13 crew guys, approximately, four drivers, um, two crew chiefs, it is busy. Wow. It takes a lot it of is. people to put it together. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we have a full-time shop where they're working on the cars all the time when we're not at the track. Uh, so without my team, I, I would be nothing, you know? Right, They build exactly. the car, they do everything. Right. So it's constant tweaking and getting it mm -hmm. up to, to be at the perfect, basically perfect for race day, right? Yeah, and every track is different, so they need to set up the car differently for each track. Okay. So, um, Things people don't think about, right? Yeah, yeah. The There's a lot that goes into it. Now, how do you prepare yourself for, for race day? when you, obviously it's a mental thing but I mean it's you need to be healthy and, and, and in a, just in a good emotional state so how do you well when I'm at home I work out as much as I can and try to stay in shape mm -hmm. but for me as a mom I think it's different than maybe other drivers for me to be ready for a race I have to make sure my son's taken care of I know where he Isn't is. Isn't that different? Yes. yes. Yeah. And that is a difference. So you have a, a three-year-old, and mm -hmm. um, you know, and I know firsthand how how, how difficult that can be, mm -hmm. um, and it is. It's first and foremost, it's him, right? And it's, yes. And you and you have to make sure, you know, a lot of people don't have to wake up on race day and have to worry about that. So yeah, well, a lot of the gentlemen that I race against have mm -hmm. children, but their wives take care yeah, of them. Great. Um, and my husband right now works. So mm -hmm. for me, this season, I've been flying to Florida to drop my son off to my mom. And then I will fly to Texas or Atlanta or wherever I'm racing that weekend, and then fly back and then pick him up and go home. So Our mom's great. <laughs> she is awesome. She does a ton for me. It's so very I, I couldn't do it without her. Definitely. And you know that he's safe while you're exactly. doing your thing, right? Because yes. when you now when you you get in, you get into that car and you have to focus, right? And mm -hmm. it's hard because you have this little person that you know is yeah. somewhere, but you like you don't want to have to worry about that exactly. when you're in the car. Yeah. Now, when you're when you're racing, what is the average length of a race? What do you? Our races are two and a half hours, and we have two drivers per car. So Bob is my co-driver. He lives in California, mm -hmm. so he'll meet us at the track, and we switch back and forth whether I start or he starts wow. finishing. Yeah. And it's intense. Yeah, it yeah. is fun. Now, obviously, you're doing you're trying to do great things with this besides you know the you know car racing and and, and getting just bring it to the forefront for females as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, racing for toonies and and this yes. whole. Uh, Charity. You did this back in 2011 as well. We did, yes. We. I started it, uh, I've been very fortunate in my life, um, and I wanted to give back to my community, but I personally don't have the money to donate. Um, so I, I can donate my time and my resources. So we started Racing for Tunis, and we, and our charity that I, I am associated with, uh, Beta Sigma Phi, mm -hmm. we went and we started collecting tunis. And the hospital was very happy that we were doing it, but didn't think that we'd raise very much at right. first, just collecting tunies at the grocery store. Right. Um, and this is McMaster Children's Hospital, right? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And the first year we raised uh, just over $6,000 in four weeks. And this year we're trying wow. to raise $10,000. So That's amazing. So yeah. when we go back to 2011, um, you were able to, with the money that you raised, the six thousand, you were able to buy a piece of equipment for the hospital. Yes, the hospital bought a piece of equipment that helped children with leukemia, mm -hmm. um, and then this year we're trying to work on buying a piece of equipment for the emergency room. It's amazing, and that's the thing. Mm -hmm. Like people, you know, living in this community, and we're so closely tied and related to McMaster Children's Hospital, and most of us will know a child that's been in there. I mean, mm -hmm. we're saying how how fortunate we are with our children, but you know, it can happen any any time to exactly. anybody yeah. so you know we have that that relation but when you actually go in there and you see that these children and, and the, the facilities it's it is amazing it directly helps these kids it does definitely right so you can relate and what a lot of people don't realize is that the government helps the hospital with its structure and maintaining it that way but they don't buy them equipment so all of their instruments and machines wow. have to be bought through mm -hmm donations basically in fundraising. And think about that because we're talking yeah. medical equipment. So we're talking really expensive mm -hmm. stuff, right? Yes. And I mean yeah. this is and this is but it's also life saving stuff. And I, I I think that's a really valid point. A lot of people don't realize everybody thinks, well, why are we raising money for hospitals? They everything's government funded, but it's not. It's not. It's not. Wow. And you know new stuff is coming out all the time. They need to stay up to date and it's expensive to do that. Mm -hmm. So this one piece of equipment that we're trying to raise money for is a glidoscope mm -hmm. for the emergency room. Okay. Uh, it's $10,000 wow. for this little scope camera mm -hmm. that can go down their throat to make sure that they don't damage things when they're um, intubating them. And they they have one for adults and they have one for the little babies, but they don't have one for school children right now. So that's what we're trying to raise the money for this year. And think about how important that is because 
so many people are intubated when they're in the hospital. It's, yeah. it's actually quite frequent. So mm -hmm. you could see that this piece of equipment would be very much, I mean, very, very valuable. Important. Yes. Yeah. And okay. it's an emergency thing, you know? Mm -hmm. They come in and they're not breathing. It has to be done right away and it has to be done right the first yeah, time. There's no time to be running off trying to find yes. the one that's not quite suited for them. Exactly. <laughs> right? Exactly. So they have one right there. So now let's talk about how you're doing it again this year and how people can help. Well, this year we have been raising money all through the month of May. Mm -hmm. We've been through Fortino's in Ancaster, uh, down on Main Street in Hamilton, Eastgate, and up in um, Bibrook. Sorry. Okay. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. And we've just gone with our ladies from Beta Sigma Phi, and we've been raising tunies and other donations that people would like to give us. Wow. And next weekend at the Ancaster Heritage Parade, we're going to be announcing how much money we've raised. So hopefully we get to our goal. Wow. And people can also still donate online at www.mcalmontracing.com. That's perfect. And of any value, I mean, and what I think is great is that, as you say, you know, at first the hospital wasn't sure you know, how are you going to raise that much money to, you know, whatever, but yeah. $2 adds up quickly and especially it's, it's approachable for people as well mm. to just have a tuning in their pocket and do that but again of course encouraging people to to give whatever they can because it goes to something that you can see you can touch we know it's helping and it's helping in our community yeah and you never know um, when you're gonna need to go to that facility mm -hmm. right or mm -hmm. some that you know mm -hmm. so it, I think the Children's Hospital can touch anybody mm -hmm. and it's, it's a good cause. And it's great because, you know, we have the um, what, what used to be the Mother's Day Telethon every year um, with McMaster Children's Hospital and, uh, and that type of event that we still run where there's like a focus of money going in at that period of time that people mm -hmm. work on all throughout the year uh, to donate. But uh, again, there's just so much that's needed. Yes. So much yeah. that's needed in terms of equipment and care that, um, again, it, it all adds up and it all matters. So it I does. think it's a good choice that you went that direction. Oh, thank and, you. Uh, and, and we wish you the best of luck and we love definitely like to hear the, uh, the update and how you did. So the goal is 10,000. So the goal is 10,000. Hopefully we can get there or succeed it. So. That, that would be yeah, better. Even, that would be yeah. even better. All right. Thank you so much for coming to the show again. And best of luck with, uh, with your racing to come. Thank All you. Right, that's it for Tara at Home. We'll be back with more after this break. I told your mom was coming this weekend, right? No, you left that part out. Her first visit this weekend? Look around. We're not ready for that. Where are you going? To Tara. Where do you think? This is amazing. You're amazing. Well, we had a little help. Tara, where color lives. AM 900 CHML is giving you more news when you want it most. Non-stop news weekday mornings 5 till 9, weekday afternoons 3 to 6, with weather and traffic on the 9s. Hear about it first from AM 900 CHML, Hamilton's news talk leader. You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, look for trees and shrubs with the medallion plant tag. Medallion plants, locally grown, the pride of Niagara. Tara at home. Uh, we uh, let this guy back in the building. It's been a while, but uh, <laughs> barbecue nuts. <Nat, laughs> I made you with oil. Um, uh, we are barbecuing today, and we're using some of uh, Tara's famous hot peppers. Yes. People come from all over the place to get our hot peppers because we have some that are seriously hot. These are, we're not using the really hot yeah, ones. Yeah, we're gonna leave that one for yeah, another day. Yeah, we're gonna day. leave the nago alone. The nagos are very hot. Okay. That's a million scoffles there. That's very hot. But people actually hot. come here and pick those up and use those. So uh, uh, that's for crazy. <laughs> we're gonna use we're gonna use these ones here. Okay. We're gonna use the big sun mm -hmm. and a chocolate habanero. Look at that. Uh, it actually looks these, like chocolate. Yeah, you want the bite? No. <laughs> this is uh, we're gonna use these here. We're gonna do a tandoori chicken. We're gonna use mm. chicken thighs, and we're gonna use this instead of the masala. We're gonna use these as my my heat. Do the heat. Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna get. We have to get the marinade started because we have to let it sit for yes. a bit. Okay. All right. So we're gonna take a food processor. Mm -hmm. Can you hold that for a second? I can. I'm gonna take about a, a small medium onion. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put that in there. Okay. Then we're gonna take uh, a couple of uh, teaspoons of ginger, ground up ginger. We're gonna put that in there, just like that. And then we're gonna take, do you like a lot of garlic? I love garlic. Okay, so we're gonna, you're love supposed it. to use eight, I'm gonna use 12. 
Oh, we're gonna put all you're like, you're like Chef gonna... Rachel. She's all about the garlic. Too. <laughs> you I'm, know what? I'm with Garli you. Garlic's good for you. It's good for you, yes. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna turn that on. We're just gonna mix it up. Okay. Very simple like that. Then we're gonna add the rest of the ingredients, which is we're gonna use about a third cup of olive oil. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put that right in. Okay. Just mix it right in there. We're gonna use some cayenne. We're gonna use about a tablespoon of cayenne. Wowzers. Right in there, like the like the habaneros aren't uh, hot enough. I know. Then we're I'm gonna use some thinking. paprika. Okay. I know. You, I was thinking the same thing. It's like, why am I using the kind? It tastes good with it. Uh, some cumin, about two teaspoons of cumin. Okay. Gonna put that in. All oh, wonderful flavors. Mm -hmm. Beautiful flavors. And turmeric. And we're gonna turmeric. put that in. And that's about actually really good for you too. Okay. Some salt. Kay. About a teaspoon of salt. Throw that in. Mm -hmm. And my favorite of all. I had some. It wasn't a cup and a half, and now it's only a cup of yogurt. Because I had the it. other it's half. Good thing we're shooting this. It's so gonna be all gonna, gone. We're gonna put this all in there. Some yogurt. Good. Okay, and then we're gonna turn this back on, and we're gonna put in without the stem. We're gonna leave the seeds in there. Really? So you're just gonna throw the whole thing in there? We're gonna throw the whole thing in there, and the chocolate habanero, the big sign. Oh, I got some on my hands. I'm gonna make try sure this. you do this with gloves. You're gonna take the seeds out. You don't want to forget yeah, to have that sure on your fingers. Make sure you do it with gloves, because he's not. You know how you can take the sting out of your hands? Yes. How? No. How do you take this? You, uh, you rub it on some kind of something. Some kind of veg um, potato? Potato. No, you fry <laughs> a potato. <laughs> you can use yogurt. Oh. You can put your hands in milk. Milk. Yeah, or you can just lick them better <laughs> if you like to have an arrow heat. <laughs> yep. Keep and your then, hands on your pants, that's for sure. <laughs> and they told me to be good. <laughs> so we're going to let it mix up uh, nicely here. Okay. And we're going to use chicken thighs. Chicken thighs with bone in. Okay. okay, so I uh, use a resilable bag, you put the chicken thighs in there. Yep. And then once this is mixed, you let it mix for about, you know, 30, 45 seconds. Then you put it in a bag mm -hmm. and you pour it in there. Oh, look at this. And you, let it, and you let it sit for about two hours, two to three hours. You put it in the fridge. Okay. Before you put it on the grill, you take it out about 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Again, you got to bring it down to room temperature. Yep. Uh, you go to your grill. Very important to make sure your grill is nice and clean. You okay. got to make sure there's nothing sticking on the top or no buildup on the top. The grill should be around the 450 degree mark. We're looking at about a medium to high temperature. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to take the chicken. Okay. Am I going to hold that for you? I can, uh, I you can, can hold it, it for me? Yeah, okay, you hold that. it open. You won't right. come next to the grill though, well, will you? I will. I'll come close. I'll come as close as I can. So maybe you do have to I'll do, do it. have to do it. Sorry, I can't be your full assistant Okay, so you, the oil is going to keep it from sticking. And chicken is one of those proteins. Oh, I love that sound. Isn't that a great yes. sound? Listen. Can you hear it? Beautiful. And such a nice, clean grill. And the smells that are going to come oh, off of this thing. Oh, I can smell it already. Amazing. You put it down. And if you get a flare up, just, you know what? If you're afraid of the heat, mm -hmm. just turn off the burners until you get all the food on. Mm -hmm. Then put the food, then put the burners back on. Beautiful. And we're cooking chicken, okay? So chicken is one of those, everybody always asks me the number one question with chicken. Mm -hmm. Naz, my chicken sticks. What do I yes. oh, do? It really does. It does. People find that a lot. Okay, so here's the secret with chicken, okay? okay. Let me get these all on. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get this over here. <laughs> Put the lid down, very important. Keep the lid always down, it just sprayed me in this thing. Yeah, right. But you, it's, it's very good, as long yeah. as I didn't get it in my eye, because yeah. I'd be screaming right now. I know, now. don't touch your eye. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, so when you, when you get the chicken on, the, your tongs, okay, you get a set of tongs. When you yes. go to the chicken, let me open these up. When you go to the chicken and you move it around, okay, mm -hmm. say, say I went to the chicken and I go to grab the chicken. First of all, you'll see around the chicken, you'll start seeing it go brown. Yep. That means it's almost ready to be flipped over. You okay. take your tongs, clam-shaped tongs, right, and move them around. If it releases itself freely, mm -hmm. then you flip the chicken over. Oh. If, it's, if it's still sticking, just leave it, put the lid down, and wait. Okay. okay, it's very. Now, some people forget to do that. You're doing that little spray of olive oil. That's kind of key, though, isn't it? To the olive oil adds flavor and helps reduce sticking. Okay, so especially that... on stainless steel cooking grids. If they were porcelain coated grids, it would be a little bit easier because they don't stick as much. Right, but the stainless right. steel, they got to okay. be hot, and you got to put a nice seasoning on. Okay. Or you can just season your chicken. Take that mister. You know this mister here. This is a right. great little tool. Yeah, I use this all the time. I use so. this all the time. This okay. is this is one of those uh, misters. You open this up mm -hmm. and you fill it up with oil. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and then you put this back down and you pump air into it. Mm -hmm. Like this, and I'll show you what it does. Instead of buying those, you know, those aerosol sprays, mm -hmm. the, the oil, and yeah. it just and it creates look at a that. bit of a mist. Yeah, it yeah, gives you the oil, so you can direct the oil where you want it to go. Very, very simple. Mm -hmm. But definitely spray the spray the protein. Okay. Protein. Don't worry about doing it on the grits because if you do it on the grits, by the time you get the food on there, mm -hmm. it's just going to evaporate. Mm -hmm. Okay. And always very important, keep the keep lid the down. Lid now, something, another thing I want to talk about when I'm doing this, mm -hmm. if I have this at a medium temperature on one side. If you're getting flare-ups like that, see yep. how the flare-ups are dripping because the skin's melting? Yep. Move the food away from it. 
or keep the lid down. Okay. If it's medium high on this temperature here, you might want to set your temperature on this side to a low. That way you have different temperatures. So if you want to grill something, you want to move it over because you're getting flare-ups like that, mm -hmm. you, you, you know, you have okay. this area okay. here, okay? Makes sense. Yep. So it's very, it's about setting up your grill. It's all about technique. Mm -hmm. right now, we now, want, now with chicken, you cook chicken a lot longer than you cook a steak. So, because you want to make sure it's... That's the that's spicy thing about chicken. Absolutely. Well, a steak you can eat at medium, medium rare. Exactly. Got uh, some chicken you want to cook it thoroughly, about 160 degrees. And use a thermometer. Very simple. Use a thermometer. Okay. When the chicken, when it releases and you flipped it over and it's caramelized on both sides, mm -hmm. take it off, put it in the plate, and then cover it and let it sit for another three to five okay. minutes. You cover it, it'll steam itself to finish. All right. That's what we're going to do. We're going to take a break and we'll come back and we'll show you the final product. I told you mama's coming this weekend, right? No, you left that part out. Her first visit this weekend? Look around, we're not ready for that. Where are you going? To Tara, where do you think? This is amazing, you're amazing. Well, we had a little help. Tara, where color lives. Welcome back to Tara at Home, and uh, we have just completed our tandoori chicken that we made on the grill with uh, barbecue naz. Okay, so again, how long did we have it uh, grilling for? This was about 20 to 25 minutes. Okay, You want right. to make sure it's a clear juice coming out mm -hmm. uh, because it's bone in, right. uh, and, and you want to go indirect. So when I grilled them on the one side, uh, this, this side was off, this side was on. Right. When I flipped them over, I turned this side on and turned this side off. So you're always getting hot grids caramelization but no direct heat to cause that flare up beautiful and then take it off and cover it I cover it let take it, it off and cover it these are nicely cooked I've let them sit in there with the grill off right now we should remind people of course that we were using uh, we have a mill we have so much the variety in terms of how many different types of peppers that we have here at Terra oh, that definitely. people could come into now we were using ones these that are were very simple ones these are just a few that we use yeah we use the these are hot these were yeah this had a 300,000 the chocolate habanero yeah. and the big sun were 300,000 uh, scoffles yeah. mm -hmm. uh, the nago is a million yeah. and, I, and I'm, I'm being told that you guys have a whole variety of yeah, these we have million like a, plus a, mark at least five <laughs> good luck <laughs> different varieties at these million marks. So again, people who like the heat and like to cook with it, um, just come into Terra because we have all of, you know, we're carrying it all and you can really experiment. I'm a little wimpy when it comes to this stuff, but really? I trust you. Oh, I'll try it if you I want. I, you. I can just cut it and eat it's it. Right. It's okay with me. <laughs> I do this trust is just you. this is calling your name. All right. Oh yeah, look at this. So juicy too. Okay. Here, you want to come? You want to come grab yeah, this? Here, I'll Here. put my plate forward. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> We love when oh. you come and barbecue for us. Look at it, it's just coming apart. I know. Bon Let me just try it? Okay. I'm going to try it. Okay. I'm, you go I'm, first. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I will. Oh, I'm just oh, kidding. Stop. It's not that bad. But actually, the yogurt mm -hmm. Helps just it calms kind of, it down. Mm -hmm. It's got a nice bite to it. I love it. It's got a lot of those, those nice East Indian flavors. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, Barbecue Naz. Love Thank having you, you here. That's it for Tara at Home. Have yourself a great, hot, spicy weekend. Yum, yum.